All right. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us in this webinar for the direct ad admit form demo. Right now, we're just going to go to the apply.wisconsin.edu website. And when you get to this page, you'll end up on this landing page that looks like this. You can explore paths for admission, so different pathways that can get, um, you know, how to apply. We also, if you scroll down a little bit, frequently asked questions um, that we typically get from students. Answers to them are right here. And then also our contact information for the UWBU team. Um, UW Help team is right here. If you send us an email between or phone call between the hours of 8 and 4.30, we will be happy to assist you. Uh, but for now, let's scroll up. Uh, the Direct Admit Wisconsin is going to be in the middle of your screen, in the top middle. And if you have offers, you'll click Accept Offer. From there, you'll go ahead and create an account. How this works is um, you'll have your high school email that you'll put here. Then you'll also have your personal email login. We do this because we only had access to your high school emails, but we do want your personal email to be the one that you're using for your account and that you'll be maintaining after graduation and schools will be able to contact you through. So we ask for you to list your high school email so that we can link your files to our files, but then we also ask for your personal email address. From there, you'll get a set of um, confirmation codes to both emails, so to your high school email and to your personal email um, that uh, we're connecting those properly. If you aren't able to receive a confirmation code in your high school email, if your high school um, has our emails not on their, you know, accepted domains, just give that number a call that I listed earlier and showed earlier, and we'll be able to give you your confirmation code. So you might see that my application does say practice in it. I'm in the practice app. Um, I've switched over to it. Um, practice applications are basically the same exact applications, but none of them get submitted. Okay, so you'll see on this screen, this is what it looks like when I log in. And I've previously been in here and I've submitted a couple of forms. When you get in here, you'll have no submitted direct admit forms and no in-progress forms. These are the UW schools that I've been directly admitted to based off of my GPA um, and course selections that I've done throughout my high school career. So I'll see all of those listed. Then I'll also see some um, account information. I'm able to change my first or last name if I'd like to, the email address that I want to use um, for my personal email. Um, and you'll be able to see, you know, some more information about finding terms, finding programs, et cetera, where you're also able to access the traditional application. So you'll see I have a couple of submitted applications here. Um, and the submitted application, if you do the direct admit form, all of the information from the direct admit form will transfer over to the traditional application. And so that's a really nice feature. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start my direct admit form. You'll see some of these are grayed out. These are forms that I've already completed. So I've already completed forms for these three schools. I am going to submit a form for UW Superior and UW Stevens Point in this demonstration. I can click multiple campuses if I'd like, um, and then I'll have to select in area of study for each of these campuses. So let's say I'm interested in business and accounting, and let's say I'm interested in that at all of the schools that I'm interested in. Okay, so just to recap the choices, you're expressing interest in direct admit offers as a freshman student to explore majors at the following campuses for the fall 2025 term. Yes, that is correct. So I'm going to say I want to start over. It will give me information about, um, you know, the information that my school gave them. So if any of this is incorrect and I don't want it auto-filled, I can say, nope, that's not correct anymore, or maybe I moved. I can say, okay, that's not the correct adjust. I want to get that changed. So I'll, I'll put that for the purposes of this demonstration. And then it's going to ask for some basic information. So uh, right here, it auto-filled in my name and last name because that's what it's in in my account information. My name has never been changed. You can also put in your middle name and preferred name if you'd like, or any suffix if you have them. They'll ask for your legal sex and gender identity if you wanna put that, and then date of birth. It will ask for your social security number, US tax ID number, or do not have. And if you press do not have, you'll get this scary looking message. Um, because we really do encourage students to fill in their social security number or tax ID number when they uh, initially submit the application. And sometimes students will submit it without asking their parents, even though their parents know their social. And we really, really encourage them to submit their um, 
identification numbers if they have one um, and, you know, um, right off the bat. So if you have your social, I asked, had to ask my mom, I'm going to press, you know, that, that's my social, it's zero, 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 zero. And I was born in the United States and my citizenship is in the United States. Um, I'm from Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Where is it? All the way at the top. And then it asks, have either of your parents and or guardian earned a four-year college slash university degree? This question is asking about first-generation status. So if a student is a first-generation, if neither of their parents have gone to university. So my dad went to university and he has a four-year degree, so I'm going to say yes. Then ask for some additional family background. This is for asking for questions, um, asking these questions to gain information about military status or if you're eligible for veteran or veteran adjacent um, benefits. Are you or is a parent or spouse currently serving in the military or are you or is a parent or spouse a US military veteran? So are you of Hispanic or Latino, Latino origin? And then it will ask you questions about your racial identity. And then you're able to select more than one in this category. So if you'd like to select more than one, you're more than welcome. Um, however, you can also just select one. In this, you'll see here now, I do have to fill in my permanent address because I indicated earlier that that was not my permanent address. So I'm going to put in 000, actually, let me think of an address. Um, And then that is going to be in the United States, in Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's at the top, I always do that. And then it will do that, and then it will validate it. And then I'll say, is this validated correctly? They'll say yes, because it gets validated by, you know, formatted by the post office, and then is it your mailing address? You'll say no if you want your mail put to, sent to other places, but most people want their mail sent to their, their uh, permanent address. So we'll say yes to that. Um, the next section is going to ask about parents or guardians, and here's some key information that you want to know. It is optional, so you can skip the section using the skip parent section below. You only need to enter the number of guardians that you have information for and it may be used for contact information when you go to college and so the university might store this information for any emergency services and so um, I'm going to add my parent information my dad's name is not Emerson that's me my dad's name is John his last name is Betcher and he is my father and then we'll just put zeros in for his phone number and then yes his address is the same as student you can enter their email address if you'd like it's not it's not required um, and then I'll put in information about my mom, Sherry Butcher, and she is my mother. I want three zeros for her phone number as well. And then she lives at the same address. Um, students are put available to put up to four guardians in this section. Um, if parent people want to put their stepmother or stepfather, um, if people like other people other than their biological parents have guardianship over them, definitely put that as well. So we'll save and continue. So the next question, next section will ask questions to determine if you qualify for Wisconsin resident tuition under state law. The information collected in the following sections is used only to determine your tuition rate. Learn more about qualifying for residency, for qualifying for Wisconsin residency. Failure to accurately and completely answer the following questions may result in an incorrect tuition rate. So do you believe you may qualify for in-state tuition rate based upon Wisconsin residency? So if you press yes, you'll be prompted to complete these questions here. So um, if you add the parents, you should not have to answer for the student. But um, please select the parent or guardian who best qualifies you for the Wisconsin resident tuition rate. If neither parent lives in Wisconsin, please list the parent whose information you are most familiar with. It will give you just the list um, the list of the people that you put in, but then also a list of other people as well. So I'm going to use my dad. My dad is a U.S. citizen. He has physically resided full-time in Wisconsin. He's employed in Wisconsin. He files a resident income tax return in Wisconsin, and those are the only questions that I need to answer about my dad. Uh, I'll save that and continue. Because I filled out my parents, um, I do not need to fill in one for myself. Some students get a little bit worried about, you know, if they put in not currently working um, or outside of Wisconsin, that they're not going to get Wisconsin tuition. Um, and I tell students that these tuition or these residency questions do 
um, really depend. It's not a, you have to fill in all of these yes in order to get tuition at the Wisconsin rate. They look at every single question and they might ask follow-up questions if they need to. So you'll be asked to provide information about your educational background. This typically involves providing information about your high school or secondary slash uh, college or post-secondary. So I already answered that I went to Oconomowoc High School and it's going to ask, do I currently attend this school? Yes, I do, because I'm going to be um, a senior this year. So I started school in, in September, I think, 2021. Yeah, that's four years. So an anticipated graduation date would be June of 2025. I'm going to say yes. Um, if I went to a different school in between, say I started and I actually started here in 2023 um, and I went to a different school, um, let's say I went to Roncalli High School from September 2021 to June 2023, right? That would make sense. Um, yeah, that makes sense. It will not have a graduation date, um, but however, you will have to put both of those schools. Your transcripts will include, say I'm graduating from Oconomowoc, your transcripts should include your information from your um, your previous high school, so in this case, Roncalli, and if it doesn't, you'll need to contact Roncalli in order to get those transcripts, but it should include that information. Um, so I'm going to you know, click continue. We've worked with your high school to share your in-progress transcript, transcript so far. Please list the courses you're taking in your senior year. So we already have your transcripts so far from your freshman to junior year but what we do need is the courses that you're planning on taking so taking so you can upload a file um, or a screenshot of your infinite campus skyward power school whatever it may be of your course list otherwise you are able to put in you know your courses manually um, so i'm going to put physics one say physical education 0.5 um, say ap calculus One, AP Biology one, um, Arts and Ceramics for 0.5. And then I only need to put the high school classes that I know I will be taking or imagine that I'll be taking. Um, schools will typically check in with students at the um, middle of the school year and then at the end of the school year to get updated transcripts. And so this can be a relative um best to your knowledge um listing of what you'll be taking because they'll check in with you then it's going to ask you some important questions about college level courses so it's important for your potential campus to know if you're taking or previously taking college level courses please select yes below if you are currently taking college level courses while in high school you took at least one course at the college level while in high school that you could request a transcript for or you are currently a college student have you ever taken a college level course do not select yes if you have taken or will be taking ap ib or project lead the way courses. So because I took a, I listed my AP courses here, but I've also taken a dual enrollment course in my high school time. So I'm going to say yes. And then we'll go here. And let's say I went to University of Wisconsin, Green Bay, Manitowoc campus. Where did it go? There we go. And then it asks, do you currently attend this school? I'm going to say no. And I attended it from September 2022, let's say from to December 2022. And then will you, do you or will you earn a degree at this institution? I will not. And then let's say I also took one at Fox Valley Technical College. And I am planning on taking it this school year. So I'm going to say August 2024 and my anticipated finish. I'm planning on taking two courses, actually. So we'll say one this semester, one the next. And that is going to be May 2025. And then I will not earn a degree at that institution. Okay, so those are the institutions that I've previously taken college level courses at. Then you're allowed to list or upload all the courses that you're taking, college level courses that you're taking this academic school year. So because I said that I was, you know, had taken a class at UW Green Bay Manitoba campus, I would not list that here because I'm gonna upload a transcript for that. And so I don't need to list that out. Um, so I'll manually enter these. Let's say that I'm taking an aid or a college level course in writing and it's English 
or composition 101. And I will be taking that at Fox Valley Technical College, and that's three credits. And then let's say this school year, I know that I'm taking two classes and I'm taking general psych. And that's gonna be psychology 101, also at Fox Valley for three credits. Okay, great, that looks great. I will need to get transcripts from both of these institutions, official transcripts to send over to the universities that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna continue. Um, it allows me to you know, look over all of my answers, but from there, this all looks good. I agree. It will have both of the campuses. App type is gonna be direct admit for the fall of 2025 with no charge. After that, I'll press submit. Sign it off, and we're good to go. From here, you'll be able to see, you can download some next steps. And it'll say, congratulations, you know, students admitted will be required to um, submit final high school transcripts following their high school graduation. So not right now, uh, but then you'll be able to see your application reviewed typically within a week at Stevens Point. That's what the next steps can list offer you. Um, you'll also be able to see this right here. So I'll go into my account and I'll see it now that I have five direct admit forms. Uh, so you will see that the traditional application allows you to submit applications to universities that um, maybe didn't participate in direct admit. So UW Eau Claire, Madison, and La Crosse were the three. Um, I've already submitted my application to Madison and Eau Claire, so I'm going to submit one to UW La Crosse. So are you applying as a degree seeking student? Yes, I am. I am a U.S. citizen. Have you graduated from high school or earned your GED yet? No, I have not. And then it will classify me as a uh, freshman applicant. From there, I'm going to say I want to apply to UW La Crosse, and I'm still interested in accountancy. All 25, and then it'll ask me to review my choices. This all looks good. You can see here, would you like to copy information from your most recent direct admit form into this new application? And I'll say, yes, use previous information. It will show up that I you know, didn't because it wants me to review it. So I'll review it all and be able to say, um, this all looks good. The only thing that will change is I will have to fill out, let's get to it. So this is all the information I've already put in. I will have to put if I want my ACT score considered, and then I'll have to fill out the holistic background section. So that's gonna include the activities, employment, and the essay. But I'm not interested in doing that right now. Um, so thank you so much for watching this direct admit form demo. We really appreciate it. Please do not hesitate to give us a call. We we really, really hope that you um, that we can give you the answers that you're looking for in this application process. And we want it to be as smooth and seamless as possible. So there is our phone number and our email. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.